Okay, and this method is called multiplying with regrouping, okay? Because when you carry something over, you're regrouping, okay? You're taking it from the ones group over to the tens group, right? Okay, so a thoroughbred racehorse can run at speeds of up to 60 feet per second. Okay, so think about that for a second. How fast is a second? One one thousand. They can go 60 feet. That's like 60 feet. One, two, three, four, all the way up to 60. They can run that fast. 60 feet in one second. Can you imagine? No. Okay, during practice, Celia's horse runs at a speed of 36 feet per second. How far does Celia's horse run in three seconds? Okay, the first thing I need for you to do is raise your hand and tell me what is important information that we need to know to solve this problem. Ethan, what's the first thing we need to underline? How far does she run in three seconds? Three seconds, we need to underline three seconds. And then what else do we need to underline that's important that we have to have to solve? Waylon? 60. Thumbs up if you agree, thumbs down if you disagree. 60? Yes or no? Landon, how come we're not 60? Uh-huh. So why don't we want to use 60? Ethan, why not? Because we're not talking about a thoroughbred horse. We're talking about her one. And hers can only run 36 feet. Bingo. Does that make sense? So the important information that um, we need to know for this problem is what Celia's horse can do, which is 36 feet per second. Okay, so we don't even know for sure if Celia's horse is a thoroughbred horse. They could have just told us a random fact about a thoroughbred horse, but we're only interested in finding the answer for Celia's horse. Okay, make sense? Landon, does that make sense? Okay, so it says um, cross out the information that you will not use. We are not going to use this information that a thoroughbred racehorse can run at feet, speeds of up to 60 feet per second. That's pretty cool, but we don't need it to solve this problem. All right, here we go. So we are multiplying three seconds times 36 feet every second, right? Mm -hmm. What do we always have to start with? The estimate, right? Okay, we got to estimate. So, what do we round 36 to? 30. 40. 40. 40. And so we're going to multiply 3 times 40. Our basic fact. 3 times 4. 3, three times, times four. 4, good, is 12. And then we bring over to 0. So that means that in three seconds, Celia's horse can run about 120 feet. So we're gonna fill in, in three seconds, okay. All right, so we're gonna skip all of these um, base 10 blocks. We're gonna go down to the bottom. And I'm just gonna show you, we're taking a shortcut. I'm just gonna show you how to do this problem, okay? 36 times three. We always have to put the big number on top, right? Mm -hmm. What do you think I multiply together first? From my examples, can anybody tell me? Three times six. Three times six, good. And what is three times six? 18. 18. 18. We put down the eight, eight here the one. one. Beautiful. Okay, what do we multiply now? Three times three, 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 three which is nine, nine. One. plus one. Ten. 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 Put down the zero. There's nowhere to carry the one, so it comes.
items down here. That's it. And we're done. Easy peasy. So Celia's horse runs 108 feet in three seconds. Since 108 is close to the estimate of 120, the answer is reasonable. I think your new favorite word is reasonable. <laughs> Seems like it. Seems like it. Okay. Here we go. Here's our next problem. 8 times 22. You guys find 8 times 22? Yep. Okay, so we're doing 8 times 22. What does 22 round to? Uh, 20. 20. So we're going to do 8 times 20. Several kids in the other class, guys, on their estimate, they put the estimate of, on this one as 20. What did they do wrong? They never, I, they never. Sonia, right there. Stone. So they put down eight times 22. Um, so, so I said estimate and they wrote the estimate is 20. <coughs> What they forget, Jace? They never uh, multiplied the eight to it. They never multiplied the eight to it, right? Estimates are two steps. Step one, round. Step two, multiply. Okay. So estimates not twenty. It's eight times twenty. Eight times two is what? Eighteen. Sixteen with a zero behind it. So our estimate's going to be one hundred sixty. All right, now we've got an estimate of 160. I'll write that on your paper. And now we got to figure this out. 22 times 8. Okay, we start with the ones times the ones. 8 times 2 is 16. 16. Put down the 6. Carry the 1. Okay, now 8 times 2. 16. Plus one more. 17. Put down the 7. There's nowhere to carry the 1, so it comes down here too. So 176. 8 times 22 equals 176. Since 176 is close to the estimate of 160, it is reasonable. reasonable. Okay. Reasonable. On this next one, we're going to estimate, then we're going to do it the partial products way, then we're going to do it the regrouping way so we can see kind of the difference. Okay. So... We're multiplying 7 times $68, okay? So seven kids each have $68, okay? Visualize that. And they're trying to figure out how much money they have all together. So first, we have to estimate, what does 68 round to? Step one, round, which 68 is 70. Step two, multiply. So 68 turns into a 70. 7 times 70. What's our basic fact? 7 times 7. 7 times 7, good, which equals 49 with a 0 behind it. And then we got to put the little dollar sign, right? So that means that these kids have about $490. Now we're going to use partial product. So we start with 68 times 7. Jace, when you looked at your little um, notebook earlier, what was the very first step for partial products? Add the little zeros. zeros. Okay. So this is actually a 60, so I'm going to put a zero up there. Then, put that flat, you're going to knock it over and hurt somebody. 
7 times 60, then 7 times 8. Remember, it's almost like the opposite, right? Because when we multiply, when we multiply um, using partial products cash, we have to start with the 7 and multiply times the biggest digit first. Regrouping, though, we start with the 7, multiply times the smallest digit, the ones place. So 7 times 60, then 7 times 8. Okay, 7 times 60, what's that equal? 42. 42 with a 0. zero. And 7 times 8? 56. 56, good. And then what do we do? Stack them and add them again. Stack them and add them. Now, I try to stack them as I'm going, but um, that e that's, takes a lot of practice. So, um, if you guys need to, restack them. Okay, so now we're going to write this down. The littles, or the six gets a little zero behind it. And over here, we're going to write seven times 60 equals. And then seven times eight equals. And then we got 420, and we got 56, and then we added together, and we got $476. Okay, now we're gonna do the regrouping method, which is what I'm teaching you today. Okay, 68, times seven. Step one, Cash, what do we do first? Uh, um, multiply seven and eight. Beautiful. Seven times eight is 56. Put down the six, carry the five. Seven times six is 42 plus five more. So 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47. Okay, and we put down the seven. There's nowhere to carry the four, so it goes down here too. So we just did 56, put the six above the, five, or the five above the six, and get 476. Are we doing this um, problem, the last, very last problem? <clears throat> You'll see what we're doing. All right, so write that down. The next problem says look at the partial products and the regrouping methods above. How are the partial products 420, let me get a different color pen. How are the partial products 420 and 56 related to 476? How are those partial products, 420 and 76, related to the number 476? Ethan? All oh, because when they're added together, that's negative. Because the way they're related is when you add them together, they equal this, don't they? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what we're going to write down. Quick, quick. When you add 420 and 56, the sum is 476. You see where we're at, Landon? Yeah, because they're two different numbers. Because 420 and 56 are two different numbers. Thank you, Jace. If it was just one big number, that's when you can't use and. 4,000. Need an eraser, Landon? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you for giving me credit where credit was due for my amazing throw. Okay. <laughs> I can't get cool, but she's free from it. 
I hey, know. She, I got she, two. She should be our new quarterback. Yes, yes. <laughs> boom, you hit one of the kids in the head too hard. <laughs> boom. As long as they Ethan, thank you for raising your hand. You did it right. When you, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. What? Ethan pointed out that I forgot the word add. I was, I'm writing too quickly. When you 420. <laughs> Hang on. Wait, I, <laughs> when you add 420 and 56, the sum is 476. Oh, and I already wrote add. Good, because I said I did too. I did too. I did. Too. I did too. That's good. Add All right, we're going to do four more problems together. And then you guys are going to do some on your own. Yes. I love this. Oh, let me show you this real quick. That, da, 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 da. This says use the model to find the product of 2 times 36. So watch this. 10, 20, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. And then there's another group of uh, 36, right? Can you count by 20s? So, so count with me. We're going to count, but we're going to start with 10. Count with me, but pay attention to what we're counting by. Okay. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 61, 
we're not putting this in expanded form, we don't need to worry about putting the zeros in. Okay. Okay? Does that make sense? Uh -huh. So we're going to say 4 times 2 is your first step. 4 times 4 is your second step. Make okay. sense? Okay. So 168. So we did 4 times 2 and got 8. Then we did 4 times 4 and got 16. 168. Is that close to 160? Yes. yes. Eight on All right. Okay, Julie, I'm going to call on you again in just a second. So 32 times 2. What do we do first, Julie? We add them to the decimal. Okay, no part of estimating is adding. We round. Round. We round the bigger one. The 2 tells the 3 to stay the same. The 2 turns into a 0. 30 times 2. Basic fact cash. Uh, 30 times 2? Ella. 3 times 2. Cash, when we do basic facts, we don't include zeros. Okay? Your basic fact when you're multiplying is basically everything except the zero. We talked about that a lot yesterday. 3 times 2 is 6, and then we bring over the 0. So that means the answer to number 3 is going to be close to 60. All right, Jace, help me out. What do I do first? You round the... Oh, no, nope, I'm done with the rounding on this one. You multiply the 2, the two times 2, which would equal 4. Okay. And then you uh, multiply the... So 2 times 3, which would equal 6, so it would be 64. That's it. That's it. I just realized. Are you guys loving this new method? Yes. Yes. I, 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 even, did right. I even did the circling. All right. Look. Very good. Okay. Next. 81 times 5. Okay. Julie, what do we do first? Round and there you go, girl. What what does uh, the one tell the eight to do, Julie? Throw up one more. One is a little same. one is a little box. So four less, let it rest. So the eight stays the same. The one turns into a zero times five. Eight times five is hundred something. Eight times five. Forty. Forty. 40. And then we bring over the zero. zero. <coughs> so 400 is our estimate. Okay, uh, and Sophie, what two numbers do we multiply together first on number four? One times five. And you're right. I'm going to have you say the five first. Because when we're doing this method, we're always going to start with the bottom number. Okay, so instead of 1 times 5, we're going to say 5 times 1. But you got it right. 5 times 1, what's that equal? 5. 5, and then what do we multiply, Sophie? Five, 8 times five, 5 times 8. There you go. 5 times 8, which equals 40. 405, good job. Okay. So we did 5 times 1, which is 5, and then we did 5 times 8, which is 40. And so we, all together, it equals 405. So we have 5 off. Okay, last one we're doing together. 63 times 7. Okay, Colin, what are we going to do first? Very good. Okay, so the six stays the same. What happens to the three? It becomes a zero. Okay, and then what do we multiply 60 times? Seven. Beautiful. Six times seven is 42, and then we bring over the zero. So our estimate is 420 what? Dollars. There you go. Okay, last one. 
Here we go. Zing, what two numbers do I multiply together first? Seven times three, and that equals 21. So what do I put down here? A one, and what do I carry up here? Beautiful, good job, Zing. Um, after you finish this problem, you can give yourself a point because you did great on that. Um, Brinley, what do I do now? Multiply seven times six. Which is 42, and then what do I do? Um, add two more. Which is 44. Nice job, very nice. Okay, so we did seven times three and got 21. Put down the one, carry the two. Seven times six is 42, plus two more is 44. We can't forget that dollar sign. Okay, so, um, Peterson, I did the thing that I'm gonna show you real quick. So this is what you're gonna do first, and that's in blue, right? So I did blue is the first step, then seven times, then like this is the second step. It's kind of like in a this heart. color, then you add the two is the third step, okay? So I'm breaking that out into colors to kind of help you guys when you do the next four problems on your own. And then raise your hand and show me and I'll let you do the assignment. Okay, that is it.